got caught dancing to the music. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So Ali Madawi, who we're going to bring up next, is a very high-level consultant, has an incredible story. You're definitely going to hear a little bit about his beginning and where he is now. He is another top connector in the world. Like we are working magic always in our lives. I've known him several years, has built companies to millions, is a brilliant thought leader in his own right. And so excited to bring him on. Hopefully he'll speak in English for us. Maybe I'll throw out some more uh, words and we're going to add you to, oops, there we go. What's going on my people? <clears throat> Well, you know, I'm, I'm so excited. I've been watching since the very beginning of uh, the tour itself. And uh, um, I, I, I am the definition of the product of Think and Grow Rich. Just seeing every single thought leader, speaker, author, uh, influencer that I have read their books, that I have studied from, that I have learned from, had my five-year-old, uh, uh, you know, repeating the four phrases with uh, Dr. Joe Vitale. And it, it, I'm just so grateful. I've, I've had this moment in mind for years and here we are now. So I'm so excited and, and, and really, really uh, honored to be in, in your presence. Mm. So awesome. So Ali, before I pass it to our awesome host, because I know they have been excited to sure. meet you and to ask some questions. Will you tell us, because I gave all the highlight reel, but <laughs> give us some of that early, the low, I call it the low light reel. Yes. Uh, I'll give you the fast forward version. Born and raised in a third world country in Morocco, Northwest Africa. I uh, had the privilege to go through the worst tra trauma in the eyes of the human being, but it made me the man that I am today. So I'm thankful for it. Went through uh, child abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. I went through uh, a uh, very, um, let's just say, normal family growth um, experienced uh, struggle early on. Um, at first it was mom and dad, and then there was just mom, and then there was just dad and stepmom, and then there was just mom again and stepdad. And then now today I find myself in front of um, mom, dad, Baba, which is my actual father, and stepmom all together uh, in the United States. They're all friends. We hang out and have a good time. Uh, I came to the United States on June 20th, 2002. So if you can do the math, uh, I am about a 20-year-old American. So do not not pay attention to my real age. Just go with 20 years old. Uh, early on, I brought all of that baggage with me. I uh, was very, very mad, angry at life, angry at everybody in my life. If, if my parents, my family, my circle was the immediate initiator of the pain that I have experienced early on, what is the world going to see in me? Uh, so I was suicidal at the age of 19. I tried to take a bunch of pills um, and uh, the man above uh, source energy, right? Uh, said, no, 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 there is a bigger play for you in here. And um, here I am before you today. Uh, we, 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 we've done some great things, but I am so in love with who I am and uh, and and I love those those uh, what people would consider scars. I wear them like badges of honor um, because there are many people who may be going through those pain points right now or have gone through them and they just didn't know how to get out of it. And uh, I can tell you this one fact. I am the happiest cat you will ever have around. Just stick with me. You'll be smiling just for looking at me. <laughs> so that's the fast forward version for you. <laughs> Wow, beautiful. I have so many questions. <laughs> Go for it. I was thinking this, I was gonna ask it towards the end, but I'm just gonna ask it right now. Um, you seem like somebody who's definitely embodied the principles. I mean, we've. it seems like we've skipped over a lot of how you did some of the things that you did. Um, what would be some of the advice that you'd give to the millennials right now who are taking, these principles are, are, you know, old in terms, they're wise, they're, you know, there's, they've been around for a hundred years or so. So what would you say to some of the millennials who think that they can get rich quicker or, and some of them are finding these new technologies in ways that maybe they are growing success or they are healing, or they're moving through some of the things that may have taken years before, then they are kind of doing it faster. So I'm curious, what sort of advice do you have for millennials or what is your thought on some of the millennial ways that they're uh, growing rich or doing things in a different way? Correct. So, so first things first, Dear, beautiful, friendly millennials, you're my people. Yes, we can get richer. Just accept it. That's just step number one. I agree with you. We can. 
the issue or the challenge is we think just because we watch a documentary that tells us just think it and you will achieve it, that that's it. We're just going to sit in our basement and, we're, you know, mom's house and just say, I'm thinking it, I'm thinking it, I'm thinking it. There's a little bit more to it. And I, I was that guy, by the way, you know, once upon a time. So I'm not saying I have it perfect. Uh, the very first big time realization when I read Think and Grow Rich for the very first time is, Wow, it's not just the law of attraction. There's a lot more laws in here, you know. Like, <laughs> like I thought it was just that, and then the second realization: okay, the law of attraction was just a sub law of the law of vibration. I'm like, wow, that's insane. What else is there? Well, the law of vibration is just one of the seven universal laws that are out there, and every universal law has sub laws and agreements and so much more. So this is why everyone that we've heard talk since day one of this tour, they kept on advising us on keep on studying, keep on learning, keep on educating yourself because on its own essence, the word educate means to nurture and keep on growing. So it does not mean graduate and just that's it. Uh, I believe that that's probably the flawed uh, process that we have as millennials. We think just from one hit, I got it figured out. While in all sincerity, we are the most equipped generation to get rich quicker, to achieve anything we can think of. It's just we're unfortunately a little bit lost because our menu of life is so big. And instead of taking the time and focus on what matters and put it into uh, a process and a system and also seek guidance and mentorship, we just say, I'm just going to go live and talk about it, and, and and hopefully it works out. And unfortunately, that needs a little bit of adjustment. Yeah, so what I'm hearing you say is some of these methods that the millennials are coming out with are certainly helping them have success at a different speed and sometimes in different ways than we've formerly known, which is exciting for the advancement of consciousness and, and wealth and success all across the planet, right? We're all learning from each other. And that being a student and knowing that there's not one method, but that you've got to keep continuing to learn and grow if you want to sustain that success as an ultimate huge uh, key component of, of being able to sustain the richness and the wealth that you create. Uh, absolutely. There's a million ways to a million dollars. You just have to find a way that is 100% aligned with who you are, uh, not from an external view, but an inner being. There is an inner being within us, the source that is connected to source energy. You have to find your alignment to that source energy. And you know, the best way that, I, that I'd like to advise my, my fellow millennials here is think about the concept of coincidence. And it's my favorite. I love coincidence, right? I am a professional coincidence creator, just so you know. So the word coincidence, if you take it and separate it in half, co means the assistant, a person or a thing that assists, like a co-pilot. Incidence is an event that has occurred, is occurring, or will occur in the future. Therefore, it is in your thought, in your mind. Now, I take my son as an example. He's five year old and he says, Papa, I want the toy. I want the toy. I want the toy. That's the incident. I, his father, say, I want to give you the toy, kiddo. I really, really do. I and he want the same incident. Now, here's the issue. He wants the toy now. I say, you have to eat your food first. So there is a, an issue of alignment. Now, the moment he finishes his food and I'm like, ah, oh, my kid finished his food all by himself. The alignment happens. And therefore, I'm like, here is the toy. He says, thank you for giving me the toy. And that, my friend, is what happens in our generation. We're like, I want the hot red Ferrari. Why aren't you giving me the hot red Ferrari? Well, the thing is, you might not be in alignment with source energy where you may lack personal uh, uh, approachability. You may lack certain uh, discipline when it comes to money. And if that red Ferrari comes to you, you may ruin other areas because you may not be able in a position to take care of it. So it, it's always about that alignment and creating the beautiful coincidences that we live every single day. Wow, wow. that's beautiful. I have one more question, Rex, and then I'd love to pass it off to you. Yeah, sort of what I'm, I'm hearing you say is that there's a time, there's a timing to all of it as well. And there's Absolutely. a reward system and process for you continuing on your path. Um, some of the, the language that you're using is, is, uh, something that I really resonate with, right? Alignment and intelligence divine and things like that. What was your experience like getting in touch with divine intelligence or have you always been or identified as spiritual using source energy? Like what was that process of developing that relationship? And then how has that, how has that connection with whatever you identified as helped you become more successful in, in whatever and however you define success? 
Yeah, so one of the perks of being, a, as I like to call myself, a global citizen, I was born in Northwest Africa. I've had the opportunity to be all around the world. I've been living in the United States, is that you get to experience life and see different areas and different vantage points. And I was definitely the kid who would go when I came to, before I came to the States and, and you know, read the good book and pray all day and do all the things that were required that I believed were righteous. And then there were other times that I didn't feel like this does not make sense. There, there needs to be more. And then I came to the United States and I felt a little bit of freedom of, well, maybe I can read other books. Maybe I can study with other people. And one thing that I, it came to my understanding is that we are all the same. We all want the same exact thing. We all in some way, shape or form, we may look different on the outside, but in inside, we're like a, a balloon that has helium, right? It may be a different color balloon, maybe a different shape or size, but it's the same helium that is operating all of us, right? So that in, in, in its own essence, as an, as an admission to myself, allowed me to realize we are all one, therefore, you might not know me, dear viewer, but I'm your best friend and your brother and your cousin that you just haven't met just yet. So that gave me a different view on life. And it allowed me to realize we all want good for one another. And we might just speak a different language. We may just be in a different way, not looking at one another. And again, it goes back to that alignment. Then I understood that the I studied the Quran, I studied the Bible, I studied the Torah, and I studied them. When I say studying them, not just read through them, I really heavily went deep into studying and understanding, you know, the concept. And I realized that the Old Testament and the Torah and the Quran are the same exact scriptures, the same exact description, the same exact stories. The New Testament obviously is the new generation, right? But it was identical in terms of one was physical, another one was spiritual. That's if we're going to talk about theology. Then I started looking at this concept of energy and science and again talk about coincidences you have in the universe the four most operating atoms nitrogen oxygen carbon and hydrogen guess what in our bodies are the most powerful dominating atoms nitrogen hydrogen car uh, uh, carbon and oxygen it's the same exact thing then why is the earth having 65 to 70 percent water our bodies has 65 percent I'm like, there's gotta be, there's no way this is a coincidence. And then I was like, wait a second, it is a coincidence. We are co-creators that are extension of energy, of, of God, of source, of higher power, of inner being. And now the three of us are coexisting in this square that is in front of us right now. But when I'm outside, I'm coexisting and attached to everybody else. And my goodness is expanding into everybody else as much as I believe everybody's goodness is coming onto me. Now, just like there's a software and hardware, you're gonna need to use some uh, uh, antiviruses sometimes and protect that negative energy from the world. But that was my realization that we are 100% in alignment with divine. And, and um, you know, I wear glasses because I need prescription. This physical body does need them. But I genuinely believe I got this because it allows me to see the good in every single person in front of me. And, and it worked out really, really well, right? The, it says it right there. The more you give, the more comes back to you. And I genuinely believe that. Wow. Very beautiful answer. Rex, what are your thoughts? Well, Ali, I mean, if, if you and I start talking, we could go on for days and days. I can promise you that. I, I agree. <laughs> you know, I, I agree with everything. And I, uh, my background is similar. Uh, I, I want to make a couple of statements and then, and then bring Please. that around as a question. One is it would probably be fair to say that there's a lot going on that is rapidly changing. Um, not necessarily the way people wish it would or want it to, but it's rapidly changing. The other statement I would make is it's probably fair to say that everybody has had abuse in some way, form, or shape in their background, in their conditioning. Even the silver spooners who seem to have no problem, we, you know, when you listen to Napoleon talk toward the end of his life, said most of them are screwed up really badly, too. <laughs> yeah. just, they just have a lot of things. So, so it's fair to say most people have difficulty. They've all got conditioning and we're all global citizens because we're on the same rock circling the sun. So and, and made of the same stardust, which is, is there. Crazy. But Hill said in the, in the opening of the chapter on imagination that a rapidly changing world is ripe for people to become rich or wealthy or healthy or better because it, it, all of those changes stimulate or give stimulation to the imagination, which means we then can create better things. Sounds like that's very much what has happened for you. 
that in your life of changing and, and, and adapting that you're able to put into practice very principles that Hill has expounded on. And, and would you, uh, would you, I, I hate to use the phrase, would you agree? Cause I don't ever. Oh no, that. not, not only I would agree, but I'll double down. See, I, I imagine the end of my, my movie, you know, some of us, unfortunately, you know, we are our own Rocky Balboas and like, you know, we get knocked down and we're down and, and, and we know possibly how the end of the movie is going to be, but guess what we do? We get up and turn off our TV. We turn off our real life TV. You're like, all right, I'm down. That's the end. No, it is not. Not only that is not the end, but there are sequels. And if you use your imagination, you can absolutely follow through, create, and have it all in front of you. Now, here's what, what I will put as a side note. We just have to educate one another because unfortunately, a lot of us millennials are misled or or they're they're given a little tiny portion of the information, right? Or 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 knockoffs, you know, uh, like you just go to Amazon and you see how many knockoffs of the original copies of Think and Grow Rich, and and it's just ridiculous. But that's just the the danger of of not having the proper information. But there is a season to 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 reap, and there's a season to sow, right? But you got to understand that it's always about two to three seasons apart. See, I can plant seeds today as a farmer, but I still have to wait for the next season's conditions and sun and take out the weeds and water it down and put enough shade and enough humidity and create the perfect element. And then wait, I got to wait another season after that when the air is dry and the crops just start growing. Wait, I got to wait till the last season in order to take my vegetables or fruit or whatever it may be to bank on it. Many of us are in this mindset. I just planted the seed. Come on, give me the fruit now. And that's unfortunately why, you know, everything that is around us, it is our own creation. Unfortunately, it's just, you know, it, it's, a, it's a truth and a reality. Uh, you know, when, when you think something negative, there are certain chemicals that are released from your brain and they go right to attack your actual immune system. It eats your protein out of your actual genes itself. That makes you protein deficient. That hormone that does that is called stress. That's why we hear, be careful, bro. Stress kills. Yes, it does. So when you were watching TV for two years saying the CDC says that, uh, you know, coronavirus is going to kill more people this year. Again, this is my opinion and my point of view and the way I view it. I am definitely not pushing my on anybody, but I just want to enlighten your mind that we drove our immune system at some point to be deficient. Then you walk out while you could have been very well. OK, of course, it is important. It is a real thing. I'm not ignoring that but we allowed our body to grab it and bring it onto us. That is the absolute perfect example of thoughts become things physically in creation. So now you see everybody's talking about what? Gas prices keep going up. Gas prices keeps going up. Gas price. Guess what you're doing? The same exact thing we've done. We've always had viruses all of our lives for the history of the world. Just unfortunately, we're all just focusing and creating more of it. So, no, we don't have a perfect world, but we have a perfect life that we can create again, another season and another season and another season. And you decide how the ending is to be. I love that you have pointed out that we're creating the experience that we wish to avoid with high gas prices or sure. disease in the, in the world that our focus, you know, thoughts become things. What we focus on, we get. And what you give, more comes back to you. So Absolutely. if you're giving out crap, you're going to get crap back. You're not going to get good stuff. Yep. So, Life is like an ATM machine, my friend. The more you deposit, you're going to come back eventually to withdraw. So when you when you deal with like millennials, you know, the people who are in a rush, I mean, 200 years ago, people traveled by stagecoach or, you know, chariot or whatever. I mean, you know, it took a while to get to things. They understood growing seasons. Nowadays, living in an urban world, uh, a technological world where everything is almost instant and or how do you help the people understand, wait for it, be patient, it'll come, you'll make it happen. Yeah. So, so again, it comes down to, first of all, is embracing the fact that there is always evolution, right? There is always change. My generation, your generation, we always had the same exact mindset. We always want to change. I mean, 
I studied the history of the United States and the greatest, in my opinion, generation of the United States so far has been the hippies, the changes that they've made, you know, like was incredible. Like just, just, you know, from, from a, an acceptance of, no, we are for civil rights. We are for stopping the war. We are for X, Y, and Z. That was so unifying. But the difference between back then and now is that back then there was no internet that I can search an article. So it forced you and I with two different mindsets to actually have a conversation and me to enlighten you on my perspective, why I'm looking at number six and you sharing your perspective, why it is a number nine from the way you're looking at it. And we talked about it now because of what is going on on social media, because of what's going on on a digital space. I mean, I can guarantee you, I can find something bad as much as I can find something good about anything. I mean, it's just the way it is. But what I will tell you, working with millennials, I usually a embrace, hey man, I get it. We have everything with one quick click. Do not push back because just like the the seventies, when they were like, you bunch of hippies, all you want to do is get high and sing and sit outside. Right. It was a sense of, of, uh, of pushing back on something that they saw as good. Well, guess what you're doing to the millennials, mom and dad, when you tell them, all you're doing is you're all, you're on your cell phone. And while he's looking at how to trade or, you know, what the market is looking like, he's like, mom, I'm making like $500 without you right now. Right. Don't force or push on a millennial because he or she will push back. There's a study that showed millennials care more about freedom and the ability to do what they love more than making money or owning a house or getting married. The traditional way is not the millennial way. So I personally embrace change. Hey, I get it. We're going to wear, you know, uh, uh, dress shirts above and, uh, you know, khaki shorts. And yes, I'm planning on playing golf with you afterwards, but there are specific fundamentals to any type of business or movement, or there's just a checklist that if you don't go through this checklist, I kind of almost can predict the sense of failure you're going to have or success. So if you want what I have, you must do what I've done. And therefore, here's my checklist, dear millennial. And good news, I have it on a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pass it over to Chris in a second, but I want to, I want to say thank you for honoring my generation. Uh, you're too kind. It was fun. It was a good time. And uh, but the other thing is, is back in those days that you talked about, you know, we had to go to the library. We had to actually get a card catalog. We had to go through the card catalog, find whatever it was we were looking for, then go and find the books and then go through the books and find out whether or not, you know. And today you just go to the Internet, you get Google, you get a bunch of stuff that comes up and you, you can't even verify a lot of the veracity of these things. So there's there's this lack of legwork that uh, is is at our fingertips now that uh, differs from how we had to do it in the old days. We had to do our, really had to do our own research. But Mr. Rex, to your point, I'm still in control of my paradigm and belief system. I have the privilege, the honor, the power to do some due diligence and some homework based on my core values. Mm. You know, you give a good person money, he'll be more good. You give a bad person money, he'll just be more of a jerk, right? So mm -hmm. I choose to identify, is this verifiable? Does it make sense? And does it align with my core values and my inner being? So while, yes, there may be the giant text, I'm still in control. And I hope everybody knows that. This is amazing. And I got to say, Ali, it's been a pleasure and privilege to hear you speak. And for those that may not know, a New York Weekly named Ali one of the top 10 aspiring upcoming leaders in the whole country for a reason. When you hear his story, when you hear how he grew up in situations and circumstances where it was very simple and easy for him to just use those as an excuse, but instead he rose and created a life on his own terms uh, it's truly inspiring, and I want to thank you, Ali, for sharing your story, not only today, but with all the other endeavors that you have in your life, because your story is powerful, your story is inspirational, and when people hear your story, I don't want to hear any excuses from them, right? Because, you know, uh, first of all, you look good for 20, and the, the things that you're doing is truly remarkable. So a pleasure and privilege to have you here with us, sir. Any parting words before we uh, transition? Yes, welcome adversity because adversity is the biggest deposit in your bank account, is the biggest deposit in your success. I can assure you and guarantee you it is 
only through adversity that you can grow, that you can become the strong leader, influencer, whatever you could imagine. Welcome adversity. You must go through it in order to know how to get somebody else out of it. It's like you got to mess up your credit score if you want to know how to fix it, or you got to fail in a job before you learn that you are good at a different one. It's part of life. Do not be afraid of it. It's the step in stair the stairs to getting up to that success that you would want to have. And thank you so much for uh, not only the Los Angeles Tribune, not only the UMO, uh, uh, Adora, you are amazing, incredible. And uh, to the whole uh, uh, Think and Grow Rich uh, family and the Napoleon Hill Foundation and everybody else, millennials, stop cheating and buying knockoffs. Get the original stuff. You are robbing yourself. I can tell you from experience. Get the original stuff today. Appreciate Don't you all. Treat Much yourself. Love. You got to treat yourself. Ali Mehdaoui, New York Weekly's top 10 thought leaders of the year. Thank you so much for sharing Appreciate your wisdom. Guys. We're going to take a very quick break and we'll be back to wrap up day three.